Let's open our Bible to the book of Judges 3. Judges 3. Otnil, Ehud, and Shamgar, the judges. At, at Otnil, Ehud, and Shamgar. Judges 3 verses 1 to 7. The nations left to prove Israel. As the Israelites were a type of the church of, on earth, they were not to be idle and slothful. Yahweh was pleased to try them by the remains of the devoted nations they spared. Temptations and trials detect the wickedness of the heart, the hearts of sinners and strengthen the graces of believers in their daily conflict with Satan, sin, and this evil world. They must live in this world, but they are not of it, and are forbidden to conform to it. This marks the difference between the followers of Christ and mere professors. The friendship of the world is more fatal than its enmity. The latter can only kill the body, but the former murders, murders many precious souls. Judges 3 verses 8 to 11. Agnil delivers Israel. Verse 8, in this case, in this case, since the people do not want to follow Yahweh, he is sending them back, giving them over to their sin. Interestingly, this is also the place where one day, further down the line in Israel's history, Assyria and Babylon will, will, Come and take the people into exile, one that will be far worse than their fa famous band bandage in Egypt. Through these eight years of subjection to a foreign power, the Israelites have an opportunity to experience life without Yahweh since they seem to be choosing that life after all. Verse 10 As expected, the children of Israel cry out to Yahweh, who raises up a deliverer, Otnil. Otnil's victory is due to the work of the Holy Spirit. The result of this victory is full of a gen generation of, of rest, which most likely indicates a rest from war. Forty years until Otnil dies. This shows that the holy man, as long as he is somewhere and sometimes, uh, that peace is blessed and protected. The first judge was Otniel, then even in Joshua's time Otniel began to be famous soon after Israel's settlement uh, in Canaan. Their purity began to be corrupted and their peace disturbed. But affliction makes those cry to Yahweh, who before would, would, would scarcely speak to him. Yahweh returned in mercy to them for their deliverance. The spirit of Yahweh came upon Otniel, the spirit of wisdom and courage to qualify him for the service and the spirit of power to excite him to it. He first judged Israel. 
reproved and reformed them, and then went to war. Let sin at home be conquered, that worst of enemies, then enemies abroad will be more easily dealt with. That thus let Christ be our judge and lawgiver, then he will save us. Judges 3 verses 12 to 30. Ehud, Ehud delivered, delivers Israel from Eglon. Verses 12 to 13. After Othniel dies, Israel falls away from the God of their salvation once again and faces some ironic twist of uh, circumstances that should draw their attention back. Through God's hand, Eglon, king of Moab, empowers Israel. He takes the city of palm trees, believed to be Jericho, and forces Israel to pay tribute to him. These tributes may very well have been the fruits, the fruit, the first fruit sacrifices, first harvest of crops and herds, which should have been rendered to Yahweh. Verse 13, joining Eglon are the people of Ammon and the Amalekites. After they conquer the Israelites, the people suffer 18 long years of oppression before meeting with their next deliverer. The Amalekites, who also partners with Eglon, were sworn enemies of Yahweh and Israel. Exodus 18 verse 8 describes a time when Israel defeated Amalek, but here in Judges 3, the roles are reversed. Ehud, verse 13, verse, verse 15, 15. Ehud, a Benjamite, is a left-handed warrior. He is also trusted by Eglon to present the required tribute. Ehud makes a dagger and straps it in his right eye. Verses 19 to 26, this shrewd deliverer takes advantage of his situation to bring about the salvation of his people from the tyranny of Eglon. This is not the act of an individual in a domestic dispute. Ehud, Ehud is at war, and Eglon is an unlawful king of Israel's homeland. Verse 30. The day began with a tribute to an enemy king and ended with uh, that kingdom rotted and the shame. God's people are free. Therefore, when Israel sins be, uh, is, uh, when Israel sins, Israel sins again. Yahweh raises up a new oppressor. The Israelites did ill, and the Moabites, the Moabites did worse. Yet because God punishes the sins of his own people in this world, Israel is weakened and Moab strengthens against them. If lesser troubles do not do, not do the work, God will send greater, greater troubles. When Israel prays again, God raises up Ehud. As a judge or minister of divine justice, Ehud put to death Eglon, the king of Moab, and thus executed the judgment of God 
upon him as an enemy to God and Israel. But the law of being subject to principalities and powers in all things lawful is the rule of our conduct. No such commissions are now given. To pretend to, to pretend to them is to blaspheme God. Notice Ehud's address to Eglon. What message from God but a message of vengeance can a proud rebel expect? Such a message is contained in the word of God. His ministers are boldly to declare it without fearing the frown or respecting the persons of sinners. But blessed be God, they have to deliver a message of mercy and of free salvation. The message of vengeance belongs only to those who neglect the offers of grace. The consequence of this victory was that the land had rest eight years. It was a great while for the land to rest. Yet, what is that to the sin's salvation, to the sin's, to the sin's everlasting rest in heavenly Canaan? Judges 3 verse 31. Shamgad, Chamga, Chamga delivers and judges Israel in what can seem like a strange and Arab place addendum. This story ends with a single verse about another judge, Shamga, about all, also, also little of his story is told now. He was apparently well known in the day of Deborah, the one female judge mentioned in this book in chapters 4 and 5. Shamga's name reveals that he was most likely not an Israelite, but a convert to Yahweh. The side of the country which lay southwest was infected by the Philistines. God raised up Shamga to deliver them. Having neither sword nor spear, he took an ox and ox goat, the instrument next at hand. Yahweh can make those serviceable to his glory and to his church, church good, whose birth, edu education, and employment are mean and obscure. It is no matter what uh, the weapon is. Uh, if God uh, directs and strengthens the arm, often the works by unlikely means uh, that the excellence of the power may appear to be, uh, to be of God. Know this, and the Lord Yahweh will bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us take this prayer point. Let us pray against principalities and powers. Principalities and power. The phrase principalities and powers occurs six times in the Bible, always in the, in the King uh, a verse, uh, uh, King James Version and its derivatives. Other versions translate it variously as rulers and authorities or forces and authorities or rulers and powers. In every place where the phrase appears, the context make it clear that it refers to the vast array of evil and malicious spirits who make war against the people of God. The principalities and powers of Satan 
uh, in view here beings that well the power in the unseen realms to oppose everything and everyone that is of God but they are also secular powers and authorities the first mention of principalities and powers is in in Romans 8 verses 37 to 39 the powers refers to here are those with miraculous powers whether false teachers or and prophets or uh, the very demonic demonic entities uh, that empower them another mention of principalities and powers is in corinthians 1 verse 16. here is the clear statement that god is the creator and ruler over all authorities whether they submit to him or rebel against him the final reference to principalities and powers is tied to 3 verse 1 here they refer to those governmental authorities whom god has placed over us for our protection and welfare we know that yahshua paul Peter and cause of cause apostles and disciples of Christ were assassinated and massacred by secular principalities and power, even the Roman Empire principally and principality and power. And Kushan, Rishatin, and Eglon in these in this chapter judge 3 where definitely kings of principalities and powers all defeated by the servants of Yahweh his appointed judges let us pray Lord Yahweh let your spirit come on me appoint me judge thank you Lord all to your glory in the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Lord Yahweh, send me to war against the principalities and powers oppressing your people. Thank you, Lord, all to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. I attack and overpower the king and armies of the principality and power. Thank you, Lord, all to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. As I go to the oppressing king and say, Your Majesty, I have a message from God to you. I draw the sword and plunge it into the oppressing king's belly. In the name of Yeshua, you that king of glory, oppressing Yahweh's people, I lock you behind me and leave you to die. In the name of Yeshua, every chapter is every satanic chain holding me captive. I rose to you by fire. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Every demonic power set to attack me because of my prayer fall down and die. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah, we pray. Angels of the Almighty God, search the land of the dead and the living and restore all my stolen virtues and potential in the name of Yeshua. O God, arise and visit all the evil shrines, altars, and temples assigned against my life with thunder and earthquake. In the name of Yeshua, let all images representing me in the kingdom of darkness be roasted by fire. In the name of Yeshua, every evil arrow targeted against me be deviated and fired back to your sender. In the name of Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, I pray, every evil power sitting on my wealth and position fall by the sword in the order of Eglon 
In the name of Yeshua, any spirit of death, hell, coffin, and grief delegated against me and my family and my church, I strike you with stones of fire. In the name of Yeshua, every owners of evil load in my life, carry your evil loads. In the name of Yeshua, I refuse to enter into any sarani coffin. In the name of Yeshua, blood of Yeshua, wipe off every evil handwriting of failure and disgrace from my life and my children's life. In the name of Yeshua, I shall be a voice of deliverance, gospel, hope, holiness, and peace in the kingdom of God, not an anoint, not an annoying noise. In the name of Yeshua, every war and serpentine spirit troubling my life be roasted by the Holy Ghost fire. In the name of Yeshua, and every enemy from my foundation, visiting wish doctors for my sake, be frustrated and receive Yahweh's fire, Yahweh's and Yahweh's curse. In the name of Yeshua, I decree that this year is a year of divine promotion for me, my family and my church. In the name of Yeshua, I withdraw the control of my life from the hands and domination of principalities and powers. In the name of Yeshua, O oh, Father Yahweh, give me dumbfounding miracles this year. In the name of Yeshua, O oh Lord, keep me away from anything or anybody that will take your place in my life. In the name of Yeshua, every evil altars and demons from my foundation filing evil reports against my life, be pulled down and roasted by fire. In the name of Yeshua, every evil curse uttered against my life, turn into blessings in the order of Balaam. In the name of Yeshua, Lord Yahweh, send your axe of fire to the foundation of my life and destroy every evil plantation therein. In the name of Yeshua, I stand against faith destroyers. In the name of Yeshua, thank you, Lord, all to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Thank you, Father Yahweh, that you heard our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for your answers to our prayers. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you all the praise. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Amen.